and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and in today's spotlight is what I feel to be one of the most overlooked corals in the hobby, the photosynthetic Gorgonia. Gorgonians come in two basic flavors, photosynthetic and non-photosynthetic. Non-photosynthetic corals need a very specialized environment. They are filter feeders and are best kept in non-photosynthetic tanks. Because of the specialized diet of non-photosynthetic gorgonians, I've stuck with the photosynthetic variety. Photosynthetic gorgonians get the majority of their food from the sun. These gorgonians are supposed to be capable of eating, but they're photosynthetic and they thrive on sunlight. So I've never bothered feeding mine. Photosynthetic gorgonians love light. In the wild, these guys are found in shallow water. So they get lots of light and lots of water flow. So in the reef tank, that's what we need to provide for these guys. Place them high up in the tank, give them loads of light, give them loads of water flow, and these guys absolutely thrive. I purchased the two Gorgonians you're looking at here about a year ago. While I'm not sure the exact variety of Gorgonian, they are just your average basic photosynthetic gorgonia. They have been relatively quick growing, extremely easy to care for, and really resilient. I had my rose bubble tip park right next to the big guy you're looking at in front and sting it for months. As I didn't have a place to move the coral to, I let the anemone sting it. Not the best thing for the Gorgonia, but other than a little minor tissue damage, the Gorgonia was almost unaffected by the rose anemone stinging it. Most photosynthetic Gorgonians are going to have a multi-color look to them. They are going to have a different colored base and polyp. The other really cool thing about the photosynthetic Gorgonian is the extreme polyp extension these guys have. It gives them a really cool flowery look. When placing a Gorgonia in your tank, the easiest thing I have found is to stick the base of it in the rock and thoroughly super glue it in. You may have to leave your hand in the tank for 20, 30, 40 seconds, however long it takes for that super glue to set up. But once it sets up, it's going to make for a strong, sturdy mount for your Gorgonia. And given enough time, the flesh from the skeleton will grow and attach the Gorgonia to the rock structure itself. In the last year that I've been keeping Gorgonians, they have been super easy to keep. The key, highlight, high water flow, and get yourself a healthy, easy specimen to begin with and you will have a beautiful structural piece to your tank and let's face it these things aren't that popular in the hobby so you're gonna get something that you don't see in every tank so thank you for watching this episode of mile high reefers if you haven't subscribed subscribe i've always got new videos coming reef talk if you haven't watched it yet it's the podcast between myself, Scott Anderson, and Steve Rotter of Rotter Tube. Check it out. It's going to be out every Sunday, so subscribe to watch that. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.